This is the backing plate for the gear selector. This is where the lever goes. And this is an oil sight. The selector lever works by shifting between two ball detents. I have no idea what this part looked like originally, but this is what it was like on the drill when I got it. You can see on the aluminium backing plate, there is an angle cast in. Looks about 20 degrees. The first thing I want to check is that the angle is the range of motion of the lever. Here I'm just propping the gear up so that the dog teeth are locked together. This is putting the drill in normal speed. I installed the handle parallel with the base plate, tightened the grub screw, and then I reach inside and knock my prop out of the way. And now we can test the range of motion. Perfect. That's good enough to confirm that it aligns with the casting. I made a small mistake here, so I'm cutting off the end. What I want is a contour that follows the arc of the lever. So this is basically what I'm going for. You can see the lever needs to sit about level with the aluminium casting, and the ball and spring need to ride higher. I need to make a hole and a 3mm recess. This setup is a little precarious for the Myford vs stainless steel. I was worried that the piece would move, but the high speed steel cutter actually went pretty well against the stainless. Now I need to fix the stainless steel plate to the aluminium casting. First I need to roughly mark where the ball t-tents will go, so that I don't put any screws in the way. What arrangement looks best? I need even clamping force around the oil site, but otherwise the plate just needs to be held in place. Right up until drilling the holes, I was on the right track. My plan was to drill the tapping drill size for an M5 thread, and then use the stainless plate as a drill through template for the holes in the aluminium. But I reached for the 5mm drill instead, and drilled four holes before my brain engaged. So now I have to transfer the hole centers. I roughly made a 5mm transfer punch, and of course, through shallow holes like this, a punch is never going to align perfectly. So it was a little bit more hassle to do it this way, but no big deal. I drilled the aluminium with a 4.3mm drill bit for a standard M5 thread. One hole first to line everything up, and then the rest.
Now it's time to create the ball detents. I have to be a little bit more accurate than approximate if the lever is going to sit well in either position. The feeler gauge is just being used to establish a zero datum between the drill and the face of the plate. This will give a start point for measuring the depth of the second hole. I drilled and tested until it felt about right. I ended up at 100 thousandths deep. So now on the second detent hole, we can repeat the setup and run the indicator in 100 thou. Should in theory match the first hole. And yeah, I did think about using a ball end mill to do this, but I would have had to purchase one, and they are pretty expensive. I compromised and settled for a regular drill bit. Looks okay. Is this hole larger than the other? I think it kind of is. Must be close enough. Obviously we won't be reusing this crusty old piece of plastic. I think I have enough clear acrylic to make another one. I decided to remake the shaft. I could have kept this one, but the last guys were using a grub screw instead of the original taper pin arrangement, and the shaft is a little marred up from that. And it's just a half inch round shaft with a turned down end, and I know you guys like some MyFit action. You can see from the number of holes that I'm not the first hairy armed man to work on this drill. There's one original taper pin hole, plus two subsequent attempts, and I'm going to add a third. At first I drilled an 11 64ths pilot hole for a number 4 taper pin. That's what the internet told me to use. But the internet was wrong. I ended up using a 13 64ths drill bit. That's 13 64ths of 25.4mm for us metric guys, or as you North Americanos prefer, 
0.203125 inches. Now it's time to form the taper. I chose to buy this particular Somta, made in South Africa branded reamer, just so that I could work in another cheap shot about the South African cricket team. But right now, that'd be a bit like kicking a three-legged puppy. And I'm not that kind of guy. Before I can install the taper pin and the handle itself, I need to make one more part. Just a simple washer. Now we're at the critical point installing the tapered pin in the handle end of the shaft. The handle and the selector have to be clocked together at the correct angle so that the gears will engage where the handle rests and the ball detents. In the end this grub screw will be redundant but for now it makes a perfect temporary clamp. I'm propping the gear up so that the dog teeth are engaged. The plan is to put everything in place including the gasket as it affects the depth. Then use the grub screw to lock the handle as it rests in the lower ball detent and then install the taper pin. In theory this should mean everything lines up. I pre-drilled halfway through the handle with the mighty rattle drill press just so that there would be less to do by hand while balancing on a chair. First, I'm drilling an undersized pilot hole all the way through. I figure it'll be easier to finish drilling it to size down at bench height. So that should be it. Time for a test. Great, seems to work fine. When the handle is lifted up, the dog teeth are locked together and the drill is in normal speed. When the handle is downwards, the back gear is engaged. Everything turns and works as it should. But wait, I did a test with a piece of plasticine. Well, it's, it's actually a ball of that metal epoxy stuff without the hardener. But anyway, that's not important. The little flat area on the ball is where it was squashed between the dog teeth. So it looks like I'm about two or three millimeters away from full engagement. Damn it. Where I have the calipers needs to be about three millimeters higher. Obviously I can't just slightly tweak the taper pins, so I'll have to re-drill the holes in the shaft. The shaft is big enough at the big end that I can get away with drilling through the same spot, but rotated about 90 degrees. On the small end, I managed to line up one of the old holes and drill through. I measured the height using the bed of the lathe as a surface plate. Don't worry about the drill bit, that's just to make it easier to measure. From this point, the handle can't be moved in the vise. Before clamping everything down, I made sure the through hole in the handle was pretty much aligned for drilling. So at this point, I've re-drilled and pinned the selector end. That's why it's on a wacky angle. Don't worry about that, I've just put it back together to scribe the depth of the shaft in the handle. Now it's a matter of setting the height 3mm higher than before. 
and locking the shaft with the grub screw. Now drilling through the shaft, hopefully without damaging the taper bore and the handle too much. It was a bit gnarly drilling through the intersection of the first hole, but we got the job done. So now I'm reaming the taper into the new hole through the shaft. I will of course end up taking a little out of the existing bore through the handle, but luckily I didn't max the taper out the first time, so that will be fine. So now the angle between the handle and the selector has been adjusted and will hopefully result in better engagement. So now putting it back together for about the 20th time. I've placed the little ball on the dog teeth again. Looks pretty good. Let's pull it out and have a look. I'd call that perfectly squashed.